Some interesting news out of NASA today. Scientists have discovered that there is a solar wind, or there have been solar winds that are blowing away Mars's atmosphere. And this is really interesting because it gives us a lot of insights into what uh, may have been a planet that was very much like Earth and how it became a cold, dry desert. So let's get straight to CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood. He can break it down for us better than I can. Bill, thanks for joining us. Hey, it's my pleasure. And, and you, you've stated it correctly. You know, the sun is constantly blasting out this million mile an hour solar wind made up of electrically charged protons and electrons and some other material. All of that crashes into the atmosphere of Mars. And because there is no magnetic field there to help divert these electrically charged particles, uh, there are interactions that cause it to basically blow away uh, material in the upper atmosphere of the planet. They're talking about a quarter pound of material per second gets blown off into space, and that doesn't sound like much, but when you extrapolate that back billions of years, and you realize that when a solar storm happens, this rate of loss would increase dramatically, they're thinking that this might be the mechanism that has caused Mars' atmosphere to thin out over the billions of years, and that's what prevents liquid water from existing on the surface, and probably uh, what turned Mars from a once habitable environment into this cold, arid sort of desert world we see today. So, so really interesting, interesting observations from NASA's MAVEN spacecraft. Right, and the MAVEN, the Mars Atmosphere and Volatile Evolution Mission, which has been studying uh, Mars since it came to the planet in September of 2014, what else is, it, uh, is part of its mission? MAVEN was specifically designed to go off and study the atmosphere, not just to understand what's causing its loss today, but to try to get a sense of its evolution through time. And that's what this data really points to. This is, this is results from about the first six months of the mission. A lot of folks thought the solar wind played a role here, but this is actual data that, that essentially proves that. Uh, so you still got to extrapolate backwards. You've got to try to figure out, well, you know, how long ago did this loss happen? When, when did lakes and rivers and things like that dry up and freeze out because of these changes in the atmosphere? And it would appear that if you go back to somewhere around, I don't know, 3 billion years ago, 3.2 billion years ago or so, that's, that's after the magnetic field had stopped protecting Mars and that this activity would have really been dramatic. Uh, so it's a, it's a cautionary tale, I guess, and we're very lucky to have a magnetic field. So the other thing that's interesting about what MAVEN is doing, uh, it, well, or should I say it hasn't yet done, it hasn't really assessed uh, when water disappeared from the planet. And so scientists, I, from the way I understand it, there are two sort of theories that are being floated out there, Bill. One is either the water evaporated into uh, the atmosphere or it's somehow it's trapped within the crust of Mars or within the planet itself. Right. Is that right? Yeah, and I think both of those are probably true to some extent. There's no question there's still an enormous amount of ice trapped in the surface of Mars, uh, up around the poles and then down below the surface as well. But I think the point here with the MAVEN data is you know, when the atmosphere thins out too much, you can't have liquid water on the surface. The pressure goes down so that, you know, liquid water would instantly evaporate or boil away or simply freeze, but you wouldn't have liquids on the surface anymore. And, of course, if you're thinking about a habitable environment, a warmer, wetter planet, it's now looking increasingly like Mars did, in fact, fit that bill several billion years ago. It did have liquid water on the surface. It had a thicker atmosphere. All of those things we think are necessary for life as we know it uh, but this whole uh, action of the solar wind over those billions of years, and again, the lack of a magnetic field, an active magnetic field, uh, to divert that stream has slowly leached the atmosphere away, and, and that may well be the driver in, in turning the planet into the, the dry world we see today. And so, Bill, I guess the question, uh, will ultimately scientists be able to figure out exactly uh, when Mars was suitable for life, when Mars was uh, somewhat Earth-like, and when could we expect that? Well, yeah, I think they can, but I don't think it's going to come from atmospheric studies. I think it's going to come from studies on the surface, you know, studying the geology of Mars with the Curiosity rover that's there now. Uh, there's another spacecraft that's going up uh, next year in March, I think, takes off from Mars called InSight that's going to probe below the surface of the planet. And then, of course, in 2020, there's another Curiosity-class rover uh, that'll be launched to Mars that hopefully will address these questions in more detail. But I, th I think they've got a pretty good idea now roughly, you know, give or take a few hundred million years, uh, when, when the planet started drying out. It's, it's, a, it's a fascinating topic, no question. It really is. And thanks for helping us break it down. CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood, thank you so much. Sure thing, Vlad.